Hey guys, Matt here today, and today I have Intel's latest and greatest desktop processor on hand, the 14 nanometer Broadwell E Beast that everyone seems to be talking about. You might expect me to look a little more excited to be holding an unlocked 10 core processor, but there's a reason for my lack of enthusiasm. The price. Rather than leave the bad news to the end, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yep, for some unexplained reason, Intel has decided to raise the roof on their already extremely extreme, extreme edition CPU price. Frankly, the Core i7-5960X was already a bit of a joke at $1000, and although I own one myself and very much like it, I am the first to admit it was never worth paying more than double the asking price of the 4790K for example. Still, while Intel's mainstream platform remains limited to quad-core, 8-threaded processors, those wanting more cores have had to turn to the much more expensive LGA 2011-3 platform. With rumours of an upcoming 10-core Cry7 processor circulating for some time now, everyone, including myself, was hoping, expecting, or just assuming that it would replace the 5960X as the new $1,000 Extreme Edition offering. Sadly, this hasn't been the case, as would-be consumers are now faced with a horrific asking price of $1,750 US or $2,550 Australian dollars, which is probably similar money many of you spend on your first car, or possibly even more. This, for me at least, makes the 6950X a pretty meh affair. By that I mean my initial excitement for this product went out the door the second I learned of the price. I don't care who you are, there's no possible way of justifying that price. It would have been a challenge at $1,000, but $1,750, it's impossible. Still, in the hope that potential buyers opt for a 14-core, 28-threaded Xeon E5 2680V4 instead, or AMD eventually comes out with Zen, forcing Intel to reduce the price of the 6950X, I'm going to take a quick look at a few benchmarks, namely Premiere Pro CC and Ashes of the Singularity. These results are based on a Premiere Pro CC workload provided by Intel, based on professional level video editing using 4K 30fps H.264 MP4 footage recorded at a bit rate of approximately 80 megabits per second. The input file sizes total 1.9 gigabytes and total 2 minutes and 21 seconds. The audio stream is 1536 kilobits per second, 48 kilohertz, 16 bit stereo in WAV format. The performance test measures the time to export the entire clip to a 4K H.264 MP4 format. The output is a high quality 4K video file. The Core i7-6950X took just 186 seconds to complete the workload, making it 20% faster than the 5960X and 56% faster than the 6700K. Out of interest, I threw in some older Sandy Bridge processors overclocked along with an overclocked FX 8370 processor for reference. It is clear that the 6950X can provide serious performance gains in extreme workloads, but does that extra 20% performance over the 5960X justify the almost 7 70% increase in price? I think not. I know most of you guys are going to want to know what the gaming performance looks like, and I can tell you the 6950X is not a gaming CPU, much like the 5960X which is often outclassed by the much less expensive 6700K and 6600K processors. The only game I can think of that would come close to showing any benefit to using a 10 core processor would be Ashes of the Singularity running under DirectX 12. As you can see, when paired with the GeForce GDX 1080 graphics card, the 6950X was just 2 FPS faster than the 5960X and 4 FPS faster than the 6700K. Keep in mind this test isn't a realistic representation of the settings gamers are going to be using given we're only testing at 1080p using standard or medium quality settings. Using the same unrealistic settings we also took note of the CPU frame rate which is essentially an estimated FPS based on how fast the system would have been if the system wasn't bottlenecked by the GPU. That is to say what would happen if we put a much faster GPU in the system. This is actually a very accurate measure of CPU performance. Here we see that when let loose, the 6950X is a good bit faster than the 5960X and significantly faster than the 6700K. Now, this is much more like how I suspect most GDX 1080 owners will play Ashes of the Singularity, with the exception of the resolution, which will likely be 1440p or greater. Now, with more realistic settings in play, the 6950X, 5960X, and 6700K all deliver exactly the same performance, while the overclocked Sandy Bridge processors aren't far behind. The crazy quality CPU frame rate results do favor for the 6950X, and while this is great news for extreme power users, it does mean you will require a GPU configuration that's significantly more powerful than a single GDX 1080, and possibly much more powerful than even two of these flagship graphics cards. One of the most impressive aspects of the 10-core 6950X is its efficiency. Here we see a total system consumption of just 182 watts, with all 10 cores placed under 100% load. 
That's a 6% saving over the 5960X in the same system despite the fact that we have two more higher clock cores working at full capacity. Performance wise, the Core i7-6950X is great. It's at least 20% faster than the 5960X when all cores are being utilised and it consumes less power under full load. That's a win-win as far as I'm concerned. As mentioned in the beginning of this short review, the issue with the 6950X lies squarely with the price. At 1750 US or 2550 AUD, it may as well not exist. A bit like LGA 1151 Broadwell processors in fact, of which there are only two. So what is the alternative for desktop users requiring a huge amount of cores? Well, one of my most popular videos to date was a look at the Xeon E52670 roughly 3 months ago now. This 8 core, 16 thread processor is based on the old Sandy Bridge architecture, and due to an oversupply on the second hand market, this one's $1550 server processor can be had on eBay for just $60 US dollars and landed in Australia for as little as $75. The good news here is that two of these processors can be purchased and stuck on a dual socket server grade motherboard. As a follow up to this video, I've ordered the Supermicro MBD X9 DR3 for 570 Australian dollars from Newegg along with a pair of Xeon E52670 processors. The board and processor combo is worth a little over 700 Australian dollars but will offer 16 cores and 32 threads. It'll be super interesting to see if it can match or even beat the performance of the Core i7-6950X for professional level video editing. Thanks for joining me again at Hardware Unboxed. I'm your host Matt as always. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.